Okay. Whenever we start an echocardiogram, we always want to make sure we identify the patient with two identifiers, name, birth date, medical record number. Hello, my name is Ray. I'm here to do your echo. What's your name and birth date? All right. We always start out with a parasternal long axis view. Want to grab the probe? Always want to put a little bit of gel on the probe, not too much, but not too little. It does affect your image optimization. Going to have you roll over onto your side so you're facing me. If at all possible, you always want to make sure the patient rolls. Obviously, if some inpatients can't roll, then you just do the best job you can. Maybe you put your left arm under your head. And sometimes I just grab the shoulder and kind of rotate the patient a little bit. For the parasternal long axis view, start uh, left sternal border, about the fourth intercostal space. And you always want to move around. Don't grab the first picture you get. I kind of like to start high and work my way down, but you don't want to get the highest image, but you also don't want to get the lowest image. Sometimes in the parasternal views, because you are imaging around the lungs, sometimes a deep breath in will help. So take a deep breath in, please. Blow it all the way out. And then the patient will hold their breath out. Sometimes the image, is, image will become a little bit clearer. And this is where you want to kind of move around and optimize. Okay, so that completes the parasternal long axis view. Just to go back to the actual image itself, you always want to make sure the index marker is pointed towards the patient's right shoulder. Sometimes you just rotate a little bit just to kind of optimize the image. Okay. All right, so here we're going to do some measurements to look for LVH. When you have your parasternal long axis view, I always just freeze it. And then most machines, you can use a trackball to scroll. I always scroll into the previous beat, and then I move forward. You really want to do end of mechanical diastole, so I scroll until I see the mitral valve slam shut. And most of the time, it's right around the QRS. Uh, here, it's right on the R wave. So if you can see it going back and forth, there's an anterior leaflet of the mitral valve, and you can see it slam shut. So that's where you want to do your measurements. You always want to do end diastole and systole. The walls are going to be thicker because the heart's thickening. So all your measurements are done end diastole. So then you can bring up your calipers. And what I like to do is I like to just follow the wall. You want to make sure you don't cut into the RV wall or the moderator band. So I kind of follow this wall right here. And you want to imagine a perpendicular line just below the mitral valve leaflets. So you want it to be a continuous line. So I would measure right around there. And then to the edge of the septum. So here we get a measurement of 1.0. And then, of course, you want to measure the posterior wall also. And same thing, I kind of follow the posterior wall it looks like it's right around there. And you measure till the wall ends. Here you can see the pericardium. And I, I got 0.9 centimeters. So it's 0.9 septum, 0.9 posterior wall, which is well within, within the norm. 